Okay, so welcome to the last but not least talk of the academic track. Um, I'll introduce uh, Christina Ludwig, which is a PhD student right here in the, at the GI Science Research Group in Heidelberg, and she'll be talking about uh, urban green spaces in OpenStreetMap. So go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, yeah, I'm going to give you a little insight into urban green spaces in OpenStreetMap and the challenges that we faced when trying to assess them. So first of all, the question, what is an urban green space? If you take it literally, it could be like a public park, a roadside greenery or like private gardens. They're all important, uh, provide important ecosystem services, like they have a cooling impact on the urban climate, they provide habitat, therefore increase the uh, biodiversity. In our study, uh, we're actually only focused on public green spaces um, because we're actually focused on, because they provide recreational and cultural services to people living in cities. Okay, so if you wanna go play sports or meet friends. Um, they're an important factor for the quality of life, so it's always good to know where's the next green space for you to go. And that's where our project, Mein Grün, um, is focused on. So we're trying to uh, develop a recommendation system which will recommend you always like the best or most suitable green space nearby that will satisfy your needs and activities. Okay, so if you want to have a um, quiet green space to read a book or um, a green space with a large grass surface to play soccer, for example. Um, for this, of course, we need a lot of information about green spaces, which is not um, available so far. So we're using different sources, like municipal data, uh, satellite imagery, social media data, and of course, map data to derive um, these kinds of information. And OpenStreetMap is a very rich data source, but as we know, um, before you use it, you should know what you're actually working with and how reliable data is in in aspects. So that's what we're doing assessment, um, which I'm gonna present now. Um, in Main Grün, we actually have two study sites, uh, two pilot cities, the Heidelberg, where we are right now, and Dresden. Um, in this like, talk today, I will focus on Dresden, and we'll look at the study site, which is um, in the center of Dresden, actually. Okay. So the first step when you want to assess anything is basically extracting the data. And that's actually where the problems already start. Because um, there have been like um, studies about checking the completeness of highways or buildings. And there's quite easy, you just extract all the features that contain like a building key or a highway key. Okay, but for green spaces, it's not that easy, okay? There's not just one key, but there's like several keys which are relevant. So for Heidelberg, for example, in a previous study, um, we basically just manually um, compiled a list of relevant OSM tags. Um, and if you use them, you actually get a good representation of most green spaces in Heidelberg. So it's a good fit here. And for example, we will have land use cemetery, for example, um, which is a good fit in Germany because here cemeteries are always green and always vegetated. But if you look at other countries, for example, um, in Israel, Tel Aviv, cemeteries are almost never vegetated. Okay, so we need to find a method how to find the relevant OSM tags that actually mark green spaces. So how can we do that? Um, we can compare the OSM data basically to satellite imagery. Okay, this on the right this is a Sentinel-2 image, or it's actually a vegetation index derived from um, a 2018 uh, satellite composite, and values basically indicate uh, a lot of vegetation, low values, no vegetation. So what we do now is basically do a zonal statistics, okay? So we're, we'll take like all the features that contain a certain tag, land use are uh, grass, and then we extract all the NEVI values that are located within features that have this tag. We do this for like, several uh, OSM tags, and we plot them on a histogram. Okay, so for example, um, uh, the amenity parking um, tag will have, like, usually is associated with DVI values, okay, because normally it's paved, 
while um, features with the tag leisure equals park um, usually are um, associated with high vegetation values and um, are vegetative. So there's lots of tags in OpenStreetMap, so I would have to look at hundreds of histograms to find the relevant tags. In order to um, speed this a bit up, I'm basically deriving three values from each histogram. I'm basically just inc like, um, increasing the size of the bins of the histogram. So I'm using, um, I'm counting basically all the NEVI values that are larger than 0 0.6, okay? And that's basically all the pixels that are green, that are vegetation. Then I count the pixels which are um, lower than 0 0.3, and those are for sure paved. Everything green is kind of uncertain. Okay, those are usually mixed pixels where I can't really say is it vegetation or is it not. And I do this, I derive those three values for all the tags. Okay, I can print them in like this form. So this would be Leisure Park. Basically has a 98% um, probability that it is vegetated and 11% uncertainty, basically. And if I do this for all the tags, I, have, I get like the summary, okay? And I um, rank them by the probability for greenness or like vegetation. And then I get basically um, the OSM tags that have the um, highest association uh, with greenness. So of course there's land use forest, which is basically the best indicator and it always shows up. Land use grass, leisure park, so the ones that we actually also um, um, expect. Um, there's one here, like land use allotments. Um, that's basically uh, it's some private gardens. It's very common in Germany, I'll show you later. And this tag, for example, is associated with like a very high uncertainty. Okay, we'll see later why that is. Just maybe um, remember this. <laughs> and um, so all of them, as I said before, were focused on public green spaces. So I'm actually not really interested in land use residential. And um, the reason why land use residential is such a good, is so associated with high vegetation values is basically that Germans really like vegetated gardens, but private gardens are usually not mapped in OpenStreetMap. So all of those vegetation values basically are attributed to land use residential. So basically now I have um, a good list of relevant tags and their association actually with greenness. And what we can see here is also, there's not really one cutoff value where I could say, okay, those are the tags that are relevant and these are not. So it's best actually just to um, like keep working with those probab probabilities. And um, yeah, about the publicness, um, we can just like have one assumption. Could look at the access tag, which is provided in um, OSM. Uh, if it's access, yes, it's public. If it's access, no, it's private. It's, but it's seldomly given, actually. So we basically assume that everything that's mapped in OpenStreetMap is public. Besides, everything that has a key land use residential, which would be private. Okay. So now we basically have our relevant tags. But now the problem is that in OpenStreetMap, features are overlapping, right? There's land use residential, and then there's above, there's a leisure, uh, like um, leisure park, for example. So I need to kind of um, decide which one is the more important one. That's so basically generating a mesh of polygons, which actually where each polygon has like a homogeneous land use type. Um, works like this. So this is just an orthophoto of Dresden. At first we extract from OpenStreetMap all um, near topographic elements like roads, waterways, railways. We extract the most important ones, the bigger ones, and form um, city blocks, okay? Then we buffer the roads and the railways to exclude like the traffic area. And then we're using like additional OSM objects that contain some land use information, such as leisure park, for example, or land use residential. And then we're forming like this hierarchy, um, like basically a feature which is smaller than another one has like a higher hierarchy. Okay, so a land use, um, so this, for example, if this was a land use park, um, leisure park, and around there's land use residential, this would be tagged or as leisure park, while the surrounding area would be land use residential because it's of a lower priority. In the end, we also cut out like the buildings, they're basically the top priority. And we also like um, cut the city blocks again using like the path, the pathways. So now we have like this polygon mesh, and we got like the relevant tags. And now we're finally ready to actually extract um, the green spaces. 
And this is where we come up with um, our first um, yeah, map of green spaces extracted from OSM. Um, on the right, it's giving like it's the probability that a certain polygon is actually um, a public green space. And this is basically derived from this um, um, basically ranking of um, OSM tags with their probabilities. So we can see like the bigger ones are given and um, the darker it is, the more certain I am that it's actually really a green space. So we got the data, but now we need to know, okay, how good is it actually? So the first thing you do is just compare it to an external data set. Okay, we got municipal data from Dresden, where we extracted green spaces, parks, cemeteries, playgrounds, allotments, and forests. Uh, the ones that we actually find um, relevant for public green spaces. And then we basically do uh, like a basic intersect. So all the red areas are actually things that would be missing in OpenStreetMap. Um, remember I said before, allotments um, have like this high degree of uncertainty attached to them when I compare it from the NDVI. So these ones are actually not extracted from OSM, okay, because they don't have like a real, a clear association with greenness. So that's why they are actually not in this map. Um, so this is not a problem of OSM, but that's basically a problem now of the, of the methodology, or we don't have enough evidence to actually derive it. Um, if we take them out, or well, actually, uh, uh, there's another picture actually. So this is basically how it looks. So in the OpenStreetMap, it's basically uh, mapped as land use allotments, but there's like all those little huts which are not mapped. Okay, in, in some cities in Karlsruhe, I've seen uh, everyone, they mapped it. So this issue wouldn't be uh, as big here, but um, here it's not there. Um, so if we take them out, there's still like a few left. But some of them are really missing, but um, a lot of them are also like other issues. Like here, OSM is actually more up to date than the municipal data set. Um, there was a forest which was removed, which was actually uh, described in OSM, but not updated in the municipal area. And on there's also um, def problems with the definition of a green space. Okay, so the red area is actually paved. It's like a pedestrian zone, tagged as a pedestrian zone in OpenStreetMap. Um, but in the municipal data, actually the whole thing is classified as a green space, okay? So OSM is actually more, has a um, higher um, degree of detail, basically. So it's not an error, but it shows up as an error. So we see that this is not really working because the definitions of a green space in the data sets are just so different that I would have to check every feature, which I'm not really uh, willing to do. So public green spaces are like fuzzy, so we can't really do anything about it, so extrinsic um, comparisons are not really suitable. Um, yeah, so instead of this, uh, we were actually looking at, are there like intrinsic ways of finding missing public green spaces in OSM from the data itself? And there's a great example actually within the study area. So those are like basically four building blocks, apartment buildings. Uh, three of them seem to contain green spaces, one of them doesn't. Also, like their structure, you know, the side of the buildings, there's a playground, there's pathways, all hint at the fact that it's actually a public space. And when we compare it to a satellite image, we also see that it's also vegetated. Okay, so for some reason, uh, someone didn't tag this explicitly as a green space. So the idea was, um, is it possible to find such um, areas, such missing green spaces, just from the data itself? So um, we're gathering ed evidence from geographic context. Um, so we're looking for a dense path network, would be an, an evidence for public access. Uh, the presence of a POI, such as a playground, is another evidence for publicness. And a high vegetation index, derived from the satellite data, as I've shown before, would be uh, an evidence for greenness. Now, the problem is that this is just evidence which has like high degrees of uncertainty. Okay, so for example, with the, the playgrounds, um, if there is no playground mapped in OSM, it could either be that there is no playground in reality, or there is a playground, it's just not mapped. Okay, so I don't know what the case actually is. Um, and with the vegetation index, as I seen, as said before, like there's some mixed pixels which also have some kind of uncertainty where I can't really decide um, is it green or not. 
So the idea was to uh, use them to shape a theory of evidence um, to actually fuse these different sources of evidence and thereby um, explicitly consider the uncertainty. So just a little introduction to the theory. It's basically a framework for reasoning under uncertainty. Okay, um, the, the evidence is converted to beliefs or they actually or masses uh, using belief functions. So it's similar to probabilities, but not quite. So that's why it has a different name. And the difference is to probability theory is that beliefs can be a set about a set of uh, events and not just single ones. So for example, you, um, you're able to represent the state of total ignorance, okay? So in probability theory, if you have a coin and you don't know um, anything about it, you would assume, okay, I have a 50-50 ch chance. In terms of shape of theory of evidence, I would assign 0% to heads, 0 to tails, and 1 to heads or tails, because I'm sure that one of them will actually um, happen. So applied to our problem, this could work like this, okay? So from those um, NDVI um, values, I can uh, derive like a, a mass function or mass for greenness would be, for example, 3% for amenity parking, 74% for gray, and 23% is like the uncertainty. It could be gray or green. For playgrounds, if there's no playground, actually, I have no idea because I don't know whether there is no playground or it wasn't mapped. But if there is a playground, I have some evidence that it's public. Okay, I'm not completely sure, but um, um, I have more evidence than before. And with the path density, it's basically similar. So the higher the path density, the higher my belief that it's actually public. So um, I'm fusing these evidences using the um, combination rule from Dempster Schaefer. And I get the following map. So on the left side, that's basically the green spaces that I've detected before, that are explicitly mapped. And these are the ones um, that were detected from, from the geographic context. Okay? And you can also see this is the degree of belief that this is part of the class public green space. And now we can see that this place actually shows up because we have the high density of foot mag and we have the uh, play. And in addition to this, actually, um, other blocks also show up, like this one also has a playground, but other blocks which only have like single houses, no playgrounds, no, no, um, no path network, will um, show up as private green spaces, actually. So apply to the um, whole area. So the light blue one uh, areas are the ones that are that we've extracted before, that are explicitly in OpenStreetMap, and all the other ones are basically the, one, uh, the ones that we derive from geographic uh, context. And we can see that there's a lot of playgrounds in Dresden, and the OSM community is very, very busy uh, mapping all of them, and also the path network is a very high um, completeness, actually. That's what, what makes this method actually also work. Um, yeah. So with this method, we were able to like, detect some of the, the um, green spaces that were missed before, um, but there are some, some also, also a bit left. And the good thing about the dempster schaefer error dempster theory is also that um, we can also get like, an uncertainty measure of our final classification. Okay? So um, as we've seen before, like the allotments, I, don't have, I have not enough evidence from that. So those areas, actually, they all show up with high uncertainties. Okay, so they're not assigned like some random class that has the highest probability, but they actually show up as I don't know what it actually is, and then I can like also take a look at those areas and try to get more evidence from other data sources. So to conclude, um, we've seen that there are several OSM tags that um, indicate public green spaces, and they all have like varying degrees of certainty. There's not just like one set of them, but it's uh, varying and it's also varying with regions. Um, a quantitative comparison is not really feasible because uh, green spaces are fuzzy and definitions um, just vary greatly also in the data. Um, we've also seen that we can get some indicators for missing public green spaces from geographic um, context with this like, simple prototype. And the outlook would be to um, um, include additional aspects of geographic context. You know, there's benches, 
Um, there's also the building geometries that could give you more, more um, evidence for it. And in this prototype, I basically um, defined the belief functions myself. But actually, this is like a classic uh, um, problem where machine learning and data mining can actually also help to set up those rules. In addition, there's also machine learning methods that explicitly consider the uncertainty, which would also be um, worth investigating for this. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Christina, for being perfectly on time yes. uh, and uh, uh, for a very uh, deep analysis. So, questions? Should I few? Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, that was super interesting and um, really easy to follow along with something that's <laughs> obviously really complex. Um, so, good job. Um, I had a question regarding if there's any kind of opportunities for you to do some sort of field-based validation of like the comparison between areas where you have high and low uncertainty to maybe identify like a threshold of everything above 60%, for example, certainty is actually green space to kind of confirm or maybe further classify the data. Yeah, definitely. Like defining then the threshold, the final cutoff value where you say, okay, that's a green space, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's just a very difficult question, I guess. Yeah, having maybe additional ground truth data would um, I mean, because at some point, also for the recommendation system, we have to make a decision, basically, what do we include and what do we exclude. Um, we haven't, um, in this analysis, we haven't included like the municipal data, which is also maybe gives like some evidence of what to, um, which green spaces actually then to um, include. But um, yeah, that's definitely, I think, a very subjective thing then to, to, to um, set those thresholds in the end, probably. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take the liberty. Um, uh, so uh, I think that the, the, the using the dempsey Schiffer uh, theory is a really neat idea, but uh, the limitation is that you have to define what m makes you believe that somewhere, some place is, is a green space, and that would make it uh, uh, culturally dependent. So you it you wouldn't be able to generalize that. I was thinking maybe you can. Look, have you thought about looking into uh, the history of OSM and see whether there are contextual stuff that later became green spaces and use that as part of the analysis? Yeah, definitely. Um, that will be interesting. Um, I mean, yeah, that's what, what was the idea about using machine learning data mining actually to, to mine those rules, not just to define them but actually to see also regionally differently, okay, which geographic context variable, variables actually hint at the fact that that's a green space. And the good thing is like, uh, I think in every city almost, there are some green spaces already mapped. And then you could use those basically as, as training data to gather maybe the, the, the geographic context variables that are relevant. And it's, it's definitely also a data quality issue. This thing only works in Dresden because there is like a, um, a lot of playgrounds are mapped and the paths are mapped. So I would definitely do this analysis then um, at different points in time, maybe five years ago, four years ago, um, and then see whether like at, at what point it actually works. And maybe also if the, the, the context variables that are relevant also change. So that, yeah, that's actually an interesting thing to look at. Okay, thank you. So. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the previous uh, publications um, about the Meingrün project was about green routing, if I recall correctly, which was aiming at uh, suggesting routes based on OpenStreetMap data, which um, went along re recreational areas. Um, do you think, or is it even planned to combine uh, th this presentation with the routing um, to deal with the uncertainty in the routing process? Yeah, definitely. So, also, yeah, one of the aims actually of my green is to improve the the routing, to um, in, yeah, improve like the databases. So, also to include satellite imagery, 
Uh, another possibility to also would be to uh, yeah, use Mapillary or Google Street View data actually to get more information about the vegetation content. And um, yeah, so definitely that will, that will be, probably the public or private aspect will not be as important for that, but I guess that's also maybe going to be something that we have to evaluate with those uh, people testing the routing then if that makes a difference or not. One last question. Uh, you started with saying that it was for an application for finding green spaces for particular purposes. Can you derive suitability for those purposes um, automatically with any degree of certainty, like whether somewhere is likely to be peaceful or suitable for games? Yeah, of course, like OpenStreetMap is not our only uh, source, so um, information about that is um, often also derived from social media data because people um, post uh, tweets about that, so oh, it's a great place to play soccer or something. Um, we combine it also so in, uh, in, in regard to quiet places by um, like noise measurements from the city or noise maps to, to derive this information. So yeah, we try to get as much as uh, information from OSM as possible, like this, like yeah, from the POIs, um, but it's uh, definitely gonna be a big uh, data integration task. Yeah. Okay, so I would thank you once again and to all the participants of the session of, and of the academic track, which was really great. Uh, yeah, thank you.